Hello, and welcome to Super Senior Gaming. I am here today with Incognito. I am Goblin, and today we're going to be playing some StarCraft II. Incognito is going to be taking the helm, battling it out for our amusement, and I will be taking you through the storyline, telling you what's happening, giving you the important bits of information. Super Senior Gaming will be starting on some StarCraft. In the future, you may see other games from us, so I hope you will push that follow button and come back and join us sometime soon. Even if you're not a big StarCraft fan, or if you are, we're going to be doing that. There's going to be all sorts of good stuff. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and say let's dive right in and see what the future holds for us. We have so many possibilities. Um, we're going to be playing ranked on the ladder. Going for all the glory, Incog here is a top gold player, so a real um, inspiring presence for StarCraft play. Um, and I, I personally can't wait to see where he takes us, what stories we'll tell, what matches we'll find. He's, he's finding the proper positioning. When you play StarCraft, it's important to be comfortable. You need to have your P's and Q's together. You need to know where your mouse is, and you need to know where your keyboard is. So, we've been playing some 2v2. They were fun, but we're jumping into 1v1. Rank 10, bonus pool 80, 97 wins, a real maverick. Incog is a real maverick in StarCraft. I really, I, I'm just waiting to see the opponent because the opponent tells us so much. We're pushing the play button. We are downloading items. We are getting in there, ready to rock it. We're going to find us a match real quick. Shouldn't take long. Stick with us. And then, and then beauty will potentially happen here. You know, we've had some, some, some good games, some great games, and some inspiring games. Um, you know, I don't think we've ever done a match that hasn't been a learning experience. So I'm really glad you can be here with us today. Um, look for us later as well, doing some staircasing. I will be actually getting in there and playing it. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. We have a scary monster. We have a scary monster. I've never gotten to cast a game with the scary monsters before, and I love them. So his name is Dusk. Well, when does Dusk fall? Well, Dusk falls at the end of a long, good day. So Dusk, I'm guessing, even though he's a scary monster, gonna be looking for that long-term play. We are on Deadwing, a nice big map. We're getting in there. We've got the Red Terran, Incognito, versus the scary monsters. And we say good luck, have fun, because we are not rude, we are polite. And Dusk, a polite man as well. Or woman, you never know. Whatever works. Um, so, at the start of the StarCraft game, you gotta build the robots if you're the humans. Because you need the robots, they get you the things that allow you to build the other stuff. Setting a nice little waypoint there, gonna get rolling. We're gonna see a wall here. So basically the scary monsters like to send lots of little guys sometimes, really early on. And so you build a thing, a wall with like these buildings and stuff. And that helps to keep the scary monsters from all getting up in your business. Because you don't want scary monsters up in your business that is rude, unappreciated, and not what we're looking for. So you gotta get these supply depots because they give you food and oil because there's robots and they need the supply depots too, but they've got all sorts of things, human -y things, robot -y things. So we're gonna finish that up. We're gonna see a pretty quick Not barracks enough. afterwards. That's the one that Not lets enough. you get the humans with the pew pew guns because you need the pew pew guns to deal with the scary monsters. You don't wanna try and deal with the scary monster without a pew pew gun, right? That makes sense. It's like, you know, what is this? We're going to pull the blanket over our head? It is Dusk, so Dusk could potentially be beaten with a blanket. Because that's how I beat Dusk. It starts getting dark and I go to sleep. It seems right for me. Um, but, you know, I don't know if that's going to actually help Incog get through this game. We'll find out. So, we're getting some more robots. The Manny building is coming out. We're going to get some Pew pew -y guys, and they're going to help take care of the scary monsters. We don't know what the scary monsters are doing yet, but we're going to find out. You can see that Incog is starting to do what's called floating minerals. He's floating them because he needs to get more robots. 
And to get more robots, you need another robot production building. To produce that, you need lots of minerals, so he's doing what's called floating them. We got some scouts coming out here, just taking that little robot for a quick little run. Right, the robot's gotta go dip in and see what the scary monsters are doing. Cause you know what makes scary monsters even scarier? Not knowing what they're doing. We're gonna go find out. And I can't wait to see what Dusk has in store for us today. We got another command center coming out. That's the robot building one. It also can turn into like, you know, an orbital command and like scan stuff and stuff. And it's, it's cool. So Incog taking the route up that way. Ooh, we do not have cross map positions. They're vertical up over the top. We've got a single hatchery going down over there. We've got a hatchery here. Let's see what buildings. We got a spawning pool going down. That is a valuable piece of information for Incog to have. Sending his little robot guy around just in case, making sure he sees everything he needs to see. Um, We've got some of the pew-pew gunny guys coming out. The wall is complete, so we're looking nice there. Um, after the command center, oh, we're going with the two barracks strategy. So, oh, see, there was the wall doing what the wall does. It blocked that little drone guy from getting in there, so now he cannot get the information. All he knows is there's a barracks and some food. And that's pretty standard for the humans. They need the pew pewy guys and the food. So he doesn't really have any information as opposed to Incog, who now knows that there are three Three of those there hatcheries down, a spawning pool, so, you know, there might be some scary monsters at some point soon. He looks like he's going for a very greedy sort of opening, though. Gonna get them monies. And I feel that. I like them monies, too. So, I respect that. We've got a gas down for Incognito, allowing him to, you know, build things that are gassy. Sometimes you gotta build gassy stuff. Um, second barracks is finished, so that's gonna allow us to, you know, start building more humans, because humans are good. They, uh, they, they shoot stuff, and we like shooting stuff. The second robot building is done. It's converted to an orbital command, so you see Incog going ahead and taking his expansion now. That's going to let him get more of them their monies. And monies, monies drive everything. you got to have them monies to spend them money. So he's gonna go get them. He's gonna keep building them robots and going for a third barracks. He's going heavy into the pew pewy guys. Uh, we see lots of them, the Marines coming out there. Lots and lots of them. Gotta get them supplies, a good decision there. Getting built up. Um, it looks to me like we're maybe going for a seven, seven and a half minute timing attack with the pew pewy guys. With that many barracks, I hope we're gonna see some action nice and early here. Makes sense too, because we've got the three three hatchery opening from the scary monsters, and that means that you gotta go get in there and mess with them a little bit. Going into the factory now, that's a necessary building for going into lots of the more complicated buildings that build more complicated things. Usually like robots, you know, like humans and giving them guns is easy. You can just be like, here's a machine gun, shoot at some stuff, right? But with robots, you need the technology. And that starts with a factory. It can go into things like starports, allowing you to build the like fly guys. Like, and then you can like pick your units up and drop them and stuff. It's cool. And then there's like mines that come out of the factory. So pretty much a lot of your techie stuff is going to come from those later buildings. But you can just give humans guns and they'll shoot stuff. So going for that nice and early. We got some more supply coming out, trying to avoid that supply block, because you gotta do that. And here we go, coming in at about eight minutes, a little bit slower than you wanted, but ooh, getting some buildings nice and early. Ah, Cancel came in on one of them, so Dusk, showing that he's prepared. Ooh, we got the speed Zerglings coming in, trying to kite him a little bit. We'll see what happens. Ooh, not looking good, the surround coming in, and just moving away from those. Those don't matter, we're done with those. They serve their purpose. They canceled the building, they killed the building, so a, a nice little game there for, for Incog. Building up a second wall going into the bunker. The bunker is like, like humans are soft and squishy, and scary monsters have claws, right? And they want to claw the human with their digging claws. But the humans are like, well, we can build buildings, we have the technology. So they're going to hide in their building and shoot out the little holes to be like, pew, 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 you can't kill me. Uh, so that's that's what the bunkers do. We're painting with barracks already, I'm liking it. Floating some materials so it makes sense. Going into some Hellions, I assume we're gonna see a transition into Hellbats relatively soon here. Um, that will require the armory. The Hellbats are really cool. They've got like flamethrowers and stuff and they're like, 
and then it roasts up the scary monsters, because digging claws are actually meltable. And so you melt the digging claws to the ground, and then they can't do stuff. We do have, I think, Stim started. It might have been Combat Shields. I didn't see which it was, but I can see that it's doing stuff. There's like, pew, 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 doing stuff in the tech lab there off the barracks. That's one of the things, the expansions that allows you to do stuff. Wall is not quite complete. Yeah, but that's okay. You know, it's really a deterrent, not an actual wall. We just want it to be available in case. Um, you can also stuff up the holes, as, as Incog has done here with units. Again, keeping them from flooding your base, because that's what scary monsters do. They flood you. They're rude. Very rude. I expect soon to see Incog taking another expansion. He's leading the way with his, uh, his little... You know, Hellion guys, they're the cars. They have flamethrowers too, kind of like the Hellbats. They're just a little less tanky, but they're a lot faster. Uh, still don't have an armory out, so we're not going to be able to see that. We've got the third command center down, so we're going to get them robots. we got to get them robots, because they gather things. We're getting two more gas down now. Going to try and get those saturated soon, I assume. So, oh, there we go. We do have the armory already. Shows what I know. He's too fast for me. This man, his speed, the APM, beautiful. Bringing up the walls. Um, we've got, uh, I think, conversion happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the third command center, the robot builder, is now an orbital command, giving more mules, more scans, all sorts of stuff. And now, there, there's the expand into the third expansion. We don't know what the scary monsters are doing. If they haven't expanded into a fourth, this is a really good position for Hancock to be in. The scary monsters, they need that money even more than the humans. I don't know why scary monsters want money so badly, but they really want money. So, they've got to do a lot to keep up with the monies of the humans, which may be just that humans are really good at collecting money. I like collecting money. You see Incog taking down the rocks up there with his shooty guys, the marines. Um, and the reason is is that Incog and rocks, they have a thing. Um, you know, the rocks are rude. And Incog needs to teach them a lesson about the way they're behaving, which he's doing here. So we're seeing a nice supply block here. 13-minute um, supply block. Going to paint some barracks. Got to spend that money. Uh, gas isn't accumulating too much, so he doesn't need to focus too much on that gassy unit yet, but we're going to see more gassy units coming out pretty quick here. I expect maybe some marauders? Maybe? We don't really know what the scary monsters are doing at this point. All we've seen is the little, like, scary zergling guys with the wings, so they're fast and stuff. So we don't know what Dusk is doing here. Again, I think he's going to wait till 20 minutes, because he's going to wait till the sun is setting. And then he is going to drop the Dusk Hammer. Um, Incog coming out with some of his fly guys. Those guys, they can drop things and they can heal stuff, and that's useful. We like that sort of thing. So, you see him starting to saturate up that third base. A really good look. He's got guys up by the watchtower, just in case. You never know. Ah, okay. So, Incog going in here and killing these Tumas. you got to kill the Tumas, because it's a Tuma. And those expand the creep, the creep gets in the way, and you don't want that. Bringing queens down to fight with them, an interesting maneuver. Ooh, we've got spines down. They're the ones that are like, Ew. Ooh, God, that's a lot of scary monsters. Going for the surround, going for the surround. The uh, supply, the, the medevacs are loaded up. Ooh, we got Eulis coming in, too. Not too bad of a trade so far for Incog. He's done some damage there. The medevacs are dropping in. Gonna try and do a little more damage. Ooh, that hurts. That hurts. Losing the medevacs. The full force is down. Dusk is maybe coming early today. Dusk may be falling in the winter months. I'm just guessing here. Like, Dusk looks like he's ready to make a move. Here they come in, but we have the technology, we have buildings, and that is not enough scary monsters to deal with buildings. Okay, they got the building, but they sacrificed everything else. So, we still got these mutilists. Oh, that's a lot more scary monsters. Let's see if you can roast them up here. The mutilists are going to be a problem. Doesn't have any towers down currently, so they could really pose a threat for him. Oh, that's most of the monsters taking out all the stuff. Ooh, the building is down. We got to get some production happening here quick. This is maybe recoverable still. There's a lot of scary monsters there, but it's not the end of the world yet. We got upgrades rolling in. We are healing our robots with ships. So basically, that's kind of like robots are now reprogramming themselves. Like they are healing themselves. Altogether, the ships are healing the robots. The robots can heal the ships. It's kind of cheating. 
you know, it's pretty unfair, which is why the humans are overpowered in this game. We're moving in for a second movement here, see if we can get anything happening, but that is a lot of scary monsters. I don't know, we got some towers down in the main, looking nice there, we've got one of the big gigantic Thor robots down over there. That is good for handling them mutalisks, but ooh, ooh, that barrage though, doing a lot of damage to one of them. Pulling the mutalisks back actually, looks like that single Thor has convinced Dusk that the knight is not, no, no, the knight may have fallen. The knight may have fallen, no, 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 yeah, yeah, pushing him away. A really good hold there by Incog, he's still got his third, but it's being attacked, so that could be a problem. Uh, that's gonna be a problem. Gotta pull the boys, gotta pull the boys, but just not enough mobile forces to get in there and handle it. So now Incog coming down onto one base here, he's gonna have some problems, because again, the scary monsters love money. Research. And now they have that money. Upgrade complete. Game is not lost yet. There is a chance here. Um, the unfortunate part is those hell baddie guys, they can't really do much against Mutalists because they fly and flamethrowers don't work on flying units. Like, what are you going to do? Like, point your flamethrower to the sky and shoot it into there? Like, that's not a thing. So, we've got a hold though. Um, we're going to need to see Incog getting another base up like uh, a minute or five ago. Um, which he had them up, but now he's kind of in a situation here where he's got a long distance mine or he's got to lift off his command center and put it somewhere to get that money. It's, um, it's a bit of a situation, but Dusk has not fallen yet. And if Dusk has not fallen yet, then there is still hope. Darkness is the enemy here. Uh, and if he continues to build mutalists and run them in like that, oh man, that was a pretty crippling attack there, there that Incog just got on him. He was trying to, I think, rally his units down to, ooh, scary monsters, ooh, scary monsters, are the upgrades going to carry Incog through? He's doing a lot of damage here. For the amount of production he has, that was a really good trade for him right there. A really phenomenally good trade. And now these, these flying guys with the like, like, they just made some trades with those those machine gunny guys, and that's not really optimal for them. Um, the problem for Incog here is he has no money. So every unit he loses is hurting a lot more than the scary monster player who has a lot of money coming his way. Still don't have another base down, but Incog doesn't have a choice. He's got to get the machine gunners down, because you just got to hand them the guns to fight off the scary monsters, and they're like flying around and stuff. You see Incog feeling the pressure a little bit, wiping it off on his shirt. Uh oh, that's a lot of scary monsters. I think, but I think this game should have been over five minutes ago. But you see, Dusk has been intimidated by that one gigantic robot. Like, have you ever seen a gigantic robot in real life? I haven't. But I assume if I ran into one, my immediate reaction wouldn't be, you know what I should do, attack that. Instead, I think I'd say to myself, you know what would be better? Not playing with that gigantic scary robot. That is a lot of scary monsters just hanging out in the third. Going in with the stem, doing some damage to the scary monsters who are running away. That is a lot of flying scary monsters just taking damage because he's scared. I'm not quite sure why he's so scared, but Dusk is scared. Um, I think he's decided he's no longer scared, and Incog calls GG. Gonna put the surrender out. Dusk has fallen just after 20 minutes, as predicted by yours truly, the Goblin. Because his name is Dusk. Um, i just like to say, Incog, GG. Thank you, thank you. Well played. I, um, I thought the opener went really well for you. It felt to me like you were not able to disrupt the economy and stave off the coming of Dusk. Yes, and the, the, the fundamental reality that we have to face here is... An abundance of minerals unspent. Yes. Right? Yes. So every time I poked up, I didn't quite have enough. Mm -hmm. And then there I was, overwhelmed. Yeah. Overwhelmed. Yeah. So I need to work on, the next time I play Dusk, I need to work on executing my macro, making sure I'm spending my minerals. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, I think we'll do a lot better against that, that opponent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I felt like you scouted him well. Mm -hmm. You knew generally what he wanted to do, which was to fall, mm -hmm. 
because that's what Dusk does. Yes, um, absolutely. And, and you had to have known he was going for that greedy economic opening, so you knew he was going to go for the the hordes of scary monsters. Yes. The mutalists. I thought if you could have gotten a scout on the mutalists a little bit earlier, I think that would have helped. Yeah. Well, I don't actually think that that's entirely relevant. Okay. And I, I'll explain why. Okay. The response is typically to build a Thor. Yes. And that response is a lot more effective when there's Bane links. Yes. Right? Yes, which he built none and of. He built none of, right? Because the Thor then protects the Marines. So the Marines are shooting at the ground bits. Yeah. The Thor is shooting at the yep. mutalisks. And had I been able to produce enough Marines, I could have shut down that tech yeah. switch a lot faster. But you didn't spend your money. I didn't spend my money. Which, exactly. you're human, and humans need to spend their money. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. How did you feel about the fact that he built those nice speed monsters, and then didn't do anything with them for the first like? I was very game? surprised. Yeah, because like, when I saw the wings on those, like... See, when I when I made that attack and I killed those defensive structures, mm -hmm. the, the, the spine crawlers that were under construction, yes, yes. and I think I got one clean. Yes, you did. And then the, the speedling showed up. I was pretty convinced that I was going to get counterattacked immediately because that could have yeah. wiped me. So yeah. I, so I built two bunkers and yeah. started to wall off my natural. Mm -hmm. That never came. Yep. And then you were even more behind because that counter never came. So right. it just kept massing. I feel like we should have seen it coming. Uh, right, the long con. Dusk comes all at once. Right? Like, we knew up front that it was going to be a 20-minute timing attack from Dusk. Because <laughs> Dusk does not fall until right before Wait. night. Yes. So mm -hmm. I think it was really like you had the information you needed mm -hmm. and just didn't quite execute. Exactly. Okay. Um, Fair point. I think... I think it's time to get into another game. Oh, absolutely. And, and I hope you guys would like to see one more. Because I'd like to see one more. I'd like to see you spend your money. And I'd like to see who your next opponent is. You know, that's my favorite part of StarCraft in a lot of ways is the... Yeah, please, push the button. The expression of who the player is in the strategy that they play. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, you wouldn't think this would be true, but... That, you know, you can learn a lot from their names and their pictures. They can tell you a lot about the mentality, the style of your opponent. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see if my theory holds up here again. Which so far, I'd like to point out in previous episodes, we've had Steve from Accounting, mm -hmm. who was pretty much an accountant. Yeah, most definitely. We've had the cyborg. Who's... Who was clearly a cyborg. Yes. Um, and so now we've had Dusk, who fell like the dropping of nighttime after day. We are on King Sejong Station. We have a human versus human fight, but one human is a fake human. His name is Retrieval. He's playing as the Protossi alien guy, uh, part of the ZOH group. Um, we say good luck, have fun, because we're not rude. And yes, it's important. So if you're watching now, I want you to remember, say good luck, have fun, you're not rude. Um, I'm not going to run you through the start of this game again. You know, we know what's going to happen here. Robots are going to get built. We're going to get food and oil. And then we're going to build the one for making the shooty guys. Uh, that's just sort of the way it's going to work. That's the way it always works. There's nothing else to be said, really. We do see an early... Oh, Incog showing me who's boss. Leaving his base early with a robot. That robot going to get valuable intel. You need the Ready intel to make ready. decisions. If you don't have it, what are you going to do? Not You're going to just build humans. stuff and hope that it works Not out. But Incog, being a smart player, is going out to find out right now what's happening. Um, definitely gaining a lot of knowledge right now on the middle of the map, which is good. Um, he knows there's nothing there. We might see if there's a scout coming down, so I, I like that positioning. Um, he needs to get himself going onto the next set of things. So I think this is one of them macro phases, I think is what it's technically called, like a macroing. Can you macro at the start of the game? I don't know. What's going on? There we go. Looking at our scout now. Yep. He is pulling some shenanigans. Incog is going for what is called the proxy rack start, which I love. I absolutely love that he's going for this because Incog loves that two racks opener and putting it up there 
allows them to really push the pressure of that opening bill. We've got we've got a human that has a Protoss alien profile picture that tells me that this human is going to play the long game. You know, that's that's sort of the the general strategy for the aliens. If they've got the tech, so they want to get to the tech and then build stuff. Now, we're only seeing one Rax up top, and we've got a Rax coming in down here. The advantage to this is that um, if a scout pass. comes in from the other Best human pass. player, retrieval. If retrieval Best scouts, pass. he's going to see a barracks there and just think that, you know, Incog's behind. Little does he know that happening uh, right outside of his me. base yeah. is some shenanigans. But don't call it cheese. I mean, it. don't call it cheese. It's kind of cheesy, maybe. It's like, it's like calling a taco cheese, right? There is cheese in it, but it is not entirely made up cheese. You know, then you would just be eating cheddar. Instead, we have a proxy racks opener with one in the base. So we've got we've got some some reapers coming out. Oh, are we gonna go Mass Reaper? I hope we're going Mass Reaper. That would just be adorable. We don't have any units out on the human side yet, on the red human retrieval side. But, uh-oh, I just figured out what Retrieval does. His name is Retrieval. To retrieve something, you have to lose it first. Um, so he's gotta take care of losing something first to retrieve it. He's got his own Reaper out now, awfully late, but it came out in time to handle some business. There are two Reapers out for retrieval. Will he find the proxy Rax? Well, no, because Incog is bringing it back right now. Running it away, I don't want anything to do with that. He says, fine. Retrieval, I'm not even going to let you get behind yet. Because if Retrieval doesn't get behind, then he has nothing to retrieve. So Incog going into the long game here, it was really just a trap. He was just trying to convince him that he was going to do something and then pull it all back so that nothing actually happened up front. Leading to confusion for retrieval. A brilliant strategic move. I love it. I absolutely adore this maneuver. And you can see he's gone straight into the engineering bay too. Assuming that retrieval is now going for the quick game, which he's already established because there's two Reapers on the map. The jetpacky guys. Got the marine down early, but ooh, we got two reapers coming in. That's a bit of a problem considering he doesn't have anything up yet. Bit of a problem. Can he handle it? Can he handle it? He's just going ahead and grouping them up, grouping them up. Can he get those reapers down? The jetpacks, they're scary. They're scary. Can he get them? Nope, running away. Okay, not too much damage yet. We just gotta wait for some units to come out. Gotta have a couple units come out. Losing some SCVs now. Two marines are out. They can address those reapers. Not too bad in the scope of things. Not too bad at all in the scope of things. Another Marine's out, the barracks is back in, the micro on the Reapers is definitely doing a lot of work here. Definitely doing a lot of work, but Retrieval is no longer focusing on his game. He's no longer focusing on coming back. Right now, he is trying to bring the aggression to Incog, and I think this is gonna hurt him in the long term. Because this is not Retrieval's game. Um, he's done a lot of economic damage at this point, though. So that's starting to look pretty painful, but the real question is, was he able to micro and macro continually through all of this? Incog even pulled back on the gas here. Just going for survival right now. That's okay. We like that. We just gotta stay alive. We gotta get those buildings building again, but we'll get there. There's no hurry. Bring out some more of the shooty guys. Like, those marines gotta do work. They gotta do work, but two reapers in, was microing them heavily while Incog was macroing behind it. So that means Incog was more focused on his buildings while that was going on. So the reapers coming in again. So this, I'm concerned for retrieval now. I'm, I'm really honestly concerned for retrieval. I don't know if he has the, uh, the mechanics to back up this high level of aggression that's going on up front here. He's done some damage, but he's losing a Reaper now, losing the second Reaper. He did take a lot of Marines out, so there's a bonus there. Coming in with some more Marines, so he did have something going on behind it, which is good for him. We'll see if he's done enough behind it, though. Um, Incog does have his upgrades going, so that's a, a big bonus for him. He basically just has to hold here. We're seeing that his wall is not complete. That's okay. 
The, that, that doesn't matter. We've got some Hellions coming in behind this as well, roasting up those humans. Really rude of them, but that's okay. Incog actually doing work here with a smaller force, and those lost Hellions are really going to hurt. Um, I think he's going to be able to clean these Marines up. We'll see. He's gotten the heavy barracks opening because he's recognized, like, I just have to maintain here. And got his weapon upgrade up now. That is a huge upgrade for him. If he can get some Marines behind this, we could have a comeback on our hands. Well, I'm, I don't want to call it a comeback because retrieval is supposed to retrieve. Incognito is stealthy. You know, he's just playing the long con, drawing him in to the story he's told, which is, I'm vulnerable. But he's not vulnerable. He's got his upgrades going, he's got a Hellion out, and now he's got his production rolling on five barracks nonetheless. Um, gonna have another command center coming in here in just a second, I'm sure. Gonna macro behind that. I'm guessing that we're gonna see a really late expand from the opposing player retrieval as well, because he's been busy playing with his Reapers down in Incog's base instead of, you know, building stuff. Um, did get the Hellions up, so we know he has a factory up. Don't see any evidence of a starport yet, but it's a fairly safe assumption the starport probably followed that up. Don't know how many gases he's on yet. It would be good to know. We do see that he took one when Incog was last in his base, so, and we knew that from the factory. It's really going to be a question at this point of if he followed up with anything. Incog looking like he's going to build some tanks, which is a bit out of character for him, but I think he's probably taking the right approach. Yeah, we see Marauders coming out now. Um, just pulling his Marines back, not important. You want to come up my ramp? You want to come up my ramp? What do you got on my ramp? You got nothing on my ramp. Losing lots more gas units off of that. So gas takes a while to get. And unless you've got some pretty good gas support behind it, that can be pretty painful to be using losing those gas units. Those are medevacs you could have. Those are upgrades you could have. He's got boys coming in. Retrieval, not wanting to retrieve anything. Proving the theory wrong that you can tell anything about somebody's name. He doesn't want to retrieve. He wants to dominate. Is Retrieval an appropriate name for somebody who wants to dominate? I don't think so. Incog taking his natural now. That's uh, good. That's good. It's understandable that he's a little behind on it. Um, early aggression from Retrieval and early aggression from him led into this place. This place where, you know, things had to happen. But he's got 1-1 down. Gonna get his armory up soon. Try and get his 2-2. Two -two. So 1-1, one -one, just so you know, is the uh, armor and weapon upgrade. It makes your guys do more pew-pew, like... Like they more effectively, and that's good because you know, as you can see in these trades, as they're starting to fight, Incog's starting to pull ahead steadily. Because I would bet money his upgrades are ahead at this point. A little bit wonky at 13 minutes, but this game has been a bit of a wonky game, so we'll see what happens here. Let's see if Retrieval can retrieve this one. I'm starting to feel like he's gonna be in a retrieval position pretty quick here. We'll see, he's let Incog macro an awful lot over the last five-ish minutes or so. And that's not where you really want to be when you have an early advantage when two Reapers doing that much economic damage. Now you're starting to make things look a little sketchier. So, we'll see what happens. We've got the tech lab starting to research Cloak. Now this is an interesting decision. So, the Cloak is for the Banshees. And what the Banshees do is they go invisible and then they harass them. Just trying to push up that ramp. A lot of damage being dealt there by Incog with the siege tank. Oh, he's pulling out. Retrieval's like, never mind. I want nothing to do with this. 62 supply, supply block at 15 minutes. That's okay. It's been a weird game, as mentioned before. Uh, we got two engineering bays up now. Just waiting on some gas. Gonna get our 3-3s three going, I think? No, 2-2. Two -two. We're looking at 2-2 two -two here, I'm pretty sure. Got some things getting roasted inside the base. That's, uh, we got a drop happening. We got a drop happening. And, ooh, that was a lot of damage done there. Lots of SCVs lost to that three Hellion drop. That's okay. We do have a natural already going. We got some extra resources. Pulling the boys off there, letting the tank do its work. That's very nice, very nice. Not losing anything in the natural. Perfect. Looking great there. Um, we could start getting some SCVs behind it, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but he's again putting a lot of gas into these attacks, and I gotta wonder how much more gas he has to support it. You know, this does mean to me, at least, that it's unlikely that he's producing tanks behind it. Another question is going to be, does he have any towers in his base? Again, we saw the cloak come down, so we're going to have stealth units going into the base at some point, some banshees and stuff happening. 
if he's not prepared for the Banshees, the Banshees could do serious damage. Just two or three Banshees will seriously turn a game around if you're not prepared. And as we see, we see no towers up in that base. No towers whatsoever. He's pushing out Marines behind this attack he just made. Pushing out Marines and Marauders, but we're not seeing towers. He does have his natural, good to know. Good to know. And we see something happening down on the bottom of the map there. Interesting. I wonder what he's got going on there. Has he taken his third in an unusual location? Widowmine gets dropped. Second Widowmine is down. Uh, going in for it. Let's see what damage this Widowmine does. Ooh, that was a brutal shot from that Widowmine. An absolutely brutal shot from that Widowmine. But we've got our Banshee in here now. So the, the real question for me here is how quickly retrieval will retrieve this situation. Uh, Incog looking at hitting some Marines. Uh, that's, that's a thing you can do. There's a tower just coming down. Just coming down with the tower. But does he have any in his mineral line? He does. Ooh, that is a crushing defeat, the loss of that Banshee. That Banshee had a lot of hope put on it. An attack coming in on the main. Not sure what's going on down there. That's a death drop looking type thing that just happened. Ooh, yeah, he just death dropped him. Just death dropped him. That could spell the defeat of Incog right there. That was a pretty brutal drop he just pulled in. Taking out some production buildings now. Um, Incog trying to pull it back here, though. He's still got his natural, so there is some chance here for this to work out for him. He's got some tanks down. A tank down. Ooh, more drop coming in right there. I thought that was the end of the drop. This could be GG, friends. This could be GG. Not looking good here for Incog. Down to his last few Marines. Coming in against him. Got another set of Marines down there. Pulling the boys down to the natural. We'll see what happens here, but... I gotta be honest. I don't think there's a recovery coming for Incog here. Maybe. Maybe, but I think Retrieval has sort of shown that the myth of the names is not really a thing. He's not retrieving anything. He's just sort of uh, handled the pressure early on, put some pressure on Incog himself, brought in some Widow Mines, scanning on the Widow Mines that aren't burrowed, but that's okay, just in case. I like to be prepared too. It's like, it's like having combat. No, we won't make that analogy. We'll just move on from there. We've got more units coming in. Taking the tank out, that is probably going to be GG right there. Yep, Incog calls GG. Good game, well played. Retrieval, not retrieving anything, just sort of taking an early lead and playing off of it. So clearly, my theory that a name can tell you about the player has been proved wrong. So, what do you think about the Reaper pressure? Tell me, tell me a story about what happened with that Reaper pressure, because I feel like that set the tone for the game. Well, I feel like I sent out the wrong SCV to build the barracks. Okay. That was part of it. So there was a, it was slow. Yeah. My opponent, I believe, if we were to look at the replay, actually did a proxy Reaper opening as well. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Didn't commit to it either. Mm-hmm. Um, the first barracks was scouted almost instantaneously. I don't know yep. if you caught that or not, but just after it was built, a Reaper came down and it looked uh, like it caught the edge of it. Okay, okay. So his Reapers were at home ready to defend rather mm -hmm. than... And if I I feel like they came from lower on the map up to defend. Almost like you brought them back for proxy again. Yes, that's my suspicion. So I maybe don't know that, if that's accurate or not. That that red dot, I was wondering whether it was a like weird third location. Probably his proxy barracks. Right. Yeah. Yes, and mine was not adequately placed. Probably slow. Um, you know, rolled the dice on a strategy I'm not that familiar with. You know, it's nice to see you pushing out and trying some other things. You Thank know, you. I, I see you playing a lot of consistently similar sorts of openings, so it's nice to see you go out there. I'm like, you know, try and at least sprinkle some cheese on your pizza. You know, like, here's the thing about StarCraft, right? Yes. There's so much more to it than just the toppings. Oh, to there's There's, like, the crust mm -hmm. of macro mm -hmm. and the tomato sauce of micro. But, like, it seems to me like you need to cheese that a little bit, right? Like, you got to have... Like, if not cheese, like, you got to have that little that little thing to, to keep people on guard. And, like, it seems to me, like, if you don't have that little, it allows them to take advantage of you. If I were to talk Street Fighter, I'd be like, sometimes you got to randomly uppercut. 
You know what I mean? Like you've just got to randomly uppercut so yeah. that people know you'll do it. And let's be let's be real here for a minute. Okay. Let's be real here for a minute. We're on the ladder. Mm-hmm. We've got one game to win. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, if I'm gonna play safe for winning one game, I'm probably not gonna open proxy double bear sure. Reaper like sure. I just did. But but someday I want to play in a tournament. I, mm-hmm. That's a goal, and I don't care if it's a gold yeah. league tournament. But I would you, like to be in a tournament. Yeah. And having tournament strategies, which means varying the play, mm-hmm. I'm trying to incorporate that into my repertoire. Yep. Because you want that chance when dusk is gonna try and fall again, mm-hmm. and you're gonna say dusk, dude. Yeah. You can't fall if my reapers are in your base mm-hmm. at sunrise. Exactly. And I think against Dusk, if your Reapers had been in his base at sunrise, he didn't have queens. Not very many. Not very many, at least. You know, yeah. I think you two could at the have... front was 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 what he had. And yeah, my Marines almost took care of that. So. Yeah. So, okay, that those were two stimulating games. They didn't turn out as well as they might have for you. I appreciate the attempt at the proxy on the second one. Thank you, God. Um. We did learn that Dusk will fall, mm-hmm. and we learned that Retrieval will not live up to his name, which I'm a little bit bummed out about that Retrieval, so if you ever do watch this, I'm disappointed. Oh. Do, do you want to do, do one more? Is that what you're feeling here? Okay, I think we've got time for one more. Um, we'll run a little bit long on this show, but if you guys are okay with it, I'm okay with it. My voice is going to need a rest, I think, soon, but I think I can talk through another 20 or so minutes. So let's um, let's dig into one more. Let's find out what the Wheel of Fortune holds for you today. I want to thank you all for being here to watch us today, and I want to thank Incog for allowing me to cast over his games. I know that having somebody talking over your shoulder and telling you about Dusk and Retrieval while you're trying to play video games adds an extra level of difficulty into it. And if you want to see Incog play under more normal circumstances, well, normal, I wouldn't go that far. If you want to see Incog play without me talking, okay, I'm going to be talking to you. If you want to see Incog play some more, and you want to see me play some more, we're going to be doing some staircasing for about an hour here, and another couple hours about eight o'clock we're gonna go live with some staircasing and then from there we're gonna move into some just straight 2v2 we are looking for apollonus apollonus i i'm guessing he's greek we are fighting a greek man here so it's gonna be like sparta is what i'm guessing um so if you've ever seen 300 i expect 300 here um incog what race was he Terran. He is the humans. That's what I thought I saw. I mean, it makes sense. He's Greek, right? Greeks are humans. So if you were Greek and not playing the humans, that'd be a little bit weird. I didn't get a chance to scope his icon because I was talking about other things, but that's okay. We don't need to know about that because we know he's Greek. And really, this is going to come down to Greek-style play. Um, So I'm expecting he's going to pull a large mass of units. He's not going to go for super complicated units. He's going to go for the Greek approach and just be like, well, we're going to just beat you. But he'll probably have a lot of upgrades on, too, because those Spartans were pretty, you know, scary. Like, pretty incredibly scary Spartans. So I'm guessing upgrades and lots of humans because he's Greek. That being said, he does look like he was trying to play off of, like, Dionysus. So, like, sort of a god name. So he might build a lot of Thors because Thor is also a god. So I, I could see this going a couple of different ways, which is to say, no matter what happens, I'm not wrong. Go ahead. I'm glad that I could share that with you, because now you know. We see Incog playing his classic opener. He went refinery first, going to get that gas a little early. Probably going to see a Reaper Fast Expand here, I'm guessing, with the gas first. Reaper Fast Expand basically means he's going to get one of the jetpack guys, run down there, scout it out. It's kind of like the proxy opening he did, but a lot more standard. He's going to take a second base nice and early, about 15, 17 mineral, or 17 supply. He's going to take another base. He's going to build another supply depot here. He's going to get that orbital command to get them mules. They're the ones that are like, yeah, and they go over to the resources and they're like, eat them. And it's delicious and good for them. Good for them. 
grab a drink real quick here. Pardon me. I'm really excited to see how a slightly more standard opening is going to go here for Incog. He, I think, tried that proxy to amuse me. I, I really think that was for my amusement. I think he heard me talking about a standard two racks opening. And it was like, you think so, do you? And so he expanded out and tried something. But this is much more classic Incog play happening here. This is something I'm much more familiar with him doing. Um, I'm not sure what that second building is, barracks or factory. It's a factory, thank you, Incog. I appreciate that. So that's a little bit of a difference. Going for more of like a 1-1-1 style opening here, I think. Uh, interesting against the Terran. There's the, the like, quote, meta for this is, is kind of a weird one. Like, you got your humans, and like, there's sometimes you see games where there's just like lots of humans running at each other, but then you also see this thing where there's like tanks, and there's more like setting of lines, and like, humans running into tanks and getting blown up, but if the tanks die, then it's bad for the person with the tank. And we did see the starport go down, so now I'm very confident in saying this is a 1-1-1 opening. One barracks, one factory, one starport. Gonna just switch things over here. Where do we have this going? The starport's gonna go on, oh, oh, oh. We have the starport going on to the tech lab. What that tells me, and stick with me here, Incog's gonna go for an early Banshee. That's what I'm calling it right now. I know it's uh, outlandish, and you probably never saw it coming, but that's what we have happening, I think. I think Incog's gonna go for the early Banshee, an early Cloak. Um, let's see. We'll find out. It looks to me like that is an early Banshee. And we're waiting on that gas here to get the Cloak running. Also an early Hellion coming out of that factory. I don't know what the plan for that Hellion is. A single Hellion is... You know, it could do stuff. The factory going on to the reactor. So maybe we're going to see a bunch more Hellions come out here? I'm, um, I'm a little baffled. Uh, we got a Reaper coming in. Not going to be able to do much against this Hellion Marine. Not going to do much at all. So Incog actually seems to have called this one really well. Dealing with the Reaper opening with no issue. The only issue here is that this Greek man has seen the early tech lab on the starport. So if he knows what that means, he's going to have a good idea of what to expect here. He's going to know there's a cloaked banshee coming in. So at this point, if he doesn't have a tower up there by the time Incog gets there, he has made a fundamental error in strategy. Also, two gases seen by him. So he knows Incog's going for a heavy gas opener. Looking to see that expand soon here from Incog, because he's got that money. And there it is. There's the expand from Incog, because he's got that money. Might as well spend it, you know? What are you going to do with that money? Just sit on it? I mean, you could, but what good does that do you? If you have money in the bank, it's not like the real world. It's not doing work for you. you got to spend it. you got to buy some men's. Buy some stuffs. So here's the Banshee coming down. Incog's basically waiting for the finish. Oh, we see an early, t early tech or, uh, engineering bay up. That means he could theoretically have some towers, but we don't see any yet. And that cloak's going to finish any second. So if Incog doesn't lose this Banshee, he's going to do some work here. If a uh, if, uh, tower doesn't go up soon, he's got to get one of those targeting things up. Um, we've got some supply lock happening. That's okay. It's a thing. It happens. Cloak is done now, so let's find out what happens here with the Cloak done. Um, does he have a tower up? This could be really devastating. Ooh, getting some of those Marines. Oh, there it is. See if Incog can get it down. Ooh, he stops the, the robot building at a really good city. Oh, there's the scan. Ooh, that hurts. That's okay, though. That scan cost more minerals than that Banshee was worth. So, not a bad trade. If he could have kept it alive, even better, but not a bad trade at the end of the day. We do see a tech lab done on the barracks that's going to allow him to get a stim rolling if he wants to, some combat shields rolling, and or just start tossing out some marauders if he wants to. Um, we see some new buildings getting put down here. I think that was a barracks that just got tossed down there. I don't think he's going to go for any more banshees. That early banshee was just to force out the tower, force out the scan. Really nice advantage for Incog right off the bat. Um, expecting to see that stim happening soon. Don't see it started yet. I think we ran into some mineral issues there, but um, putting the star or the starport down onto the reactor makes sense to start pumping out the metamax. 
Because you got to have that healing. They are the backbone. They are the thing that keeps everybody alive. Um, the Greeks. Playing the slow game. Not taking their third yet. Um, I think... I think the Greeks were a little intimidated by the, the early star port with Tech Lab. I think that was scary to them. And understandably so, right? You know, it's, um, if you're not prepared for it, it's going to do some serious damage to you. So we've got a lot of Hellions coming in here from Incog. He has pumped out a lot of those while I wasn't looking. So are we going to see a run by here with the Hellions? I don't know. We see the rock is flaming there. That tells us that Not Hades enough, has been here. Hades enough, is the god of the underworld. Not enough, and we can now assume that death is coming our way. Uh, so we're about Not to see enough, some action. Please. Got a bunch more barracks going down. Starting some upgrades here in the engineering base. Um, got an armory coming out. Perfectly timed. It's a good time to get that. Ooh, roasting it. Just roasting up that mine. Oh, that's a lot of dudes. That's a lot of men. They're starting to spread out. So Incog pulling back here after the initial fire. Uh, lost some of his units there. Not sure why they decided they wanted to go kill, but they did. Getting one more Marine out of the deal. Not bad, not bad. Insufficient Vespine gas. In a lot of ways, I look at this as Incog buying himself some time. You know, he's gotten a little bit behind from the strategies he's used so far. That is a lot of humans. So, playing out this whole their Greek thing. Um, Incog getting some tanks going. It's a good place to be at. Gotta spend that gas. Still only sitting on two gas. I expect he'll take a third gas at some point in the not too far off future here because, well, you, you need that gas if you're gonna get them tanks. And I think he does want to get them tanks. Got the armory complete, which is gonna allow him to morph Hellbats if he wants to. Probably not, though. Not for this matchup. I can't imagine not seeing the makeup of that army. I can't see how they're really gonna help. Looks like he's basically almost going like, most of the units down there are mech, but he's taking the upgrades for the infantry, so I think maybe the mechs just intended to help him hold until he can really establish that infantry push, that, um, uh, that, that gumption. Um, pardon me. Still haven't seen an attack out of the Greeks. Um, I can only assume that they need to be more on the ropes before they feel comfortable attacking. Uh, nice scan there, just hanging out there. Hasn't moved his army out at all. Give it Incog time to get out of the supply lock. Um, going ahead and dropping some things on the supply depots there so we can make them the units. Makes sense at this point. You gotta, you gotta get them units. So, um... Incog, probably we can expect to be taking a second or a third expansion sometime soon here. Um, two bases is nice, three bases is nicer, especially if you're going to support something like, say, Marines and Tanks. See, they cost monies, and you got to get that monies to support that sort of a build. So, I would definitely expect to see some more, more money production coming out here. But got to get that supply, because... I think Incog's basically trying to keep himself safe behind the push here. He's seen that he has basically medevacs, marauders, and marines. Uh, he's taken out another mine here. That one widow mine hit, maybe not worth it. Having those widow mines just hanging out there, I don't know. Questionable, kind of, maybe. Uh, it's something I would do. So, definitely questionable. And now, just starting that parade push down, because. If you're going to let somebody hang out right outside your natural, that's not necessarily the best look for you. Just cloaking up, taking a quick peek -see. complete. What's going on here? Oop, they are hit to it, but oh, those tank hits, though. Those tank hits were painful. Most of the Marines are down. Most of the Marauders are down. The tanks are down, too, but that was a brutal, brutal bait in there. Some tanks available right there. No Widow Mines that are seen yet. Still parade pushing down. Gonna have enough money to take that expansion soon if he wants it. Goes ahead and just goes with more production. I like it. Makes sense. Just did a lot of economic damage there. Yep, moving everything in now. Um, if the Spartan is going to be Spartan, if he is going to show his weakness and really get in touch with the the Hollywood movies of today, I think now is the time for him to make his push. Um, 
Getting pulled into those tanks with the vast majority of his force, as far as I could tell, was pretty brutal. Um, he's pushing in here, Incog just running away. Gonna go meet up with his reinforcements here. No hurry, no hurry. Done lots of damage, gonna get everybody pulled together, and then probably come together for one final push here. I think, I think the Greek's gonna lose his natural here shortly. I think these Spartans are really gonna need to buckle down and be efficient in their force use if they are going to avoid losing their things here. I am heartened by the fact that he has some tanks though. Without tanks, this Spartan would be in a very bad situation. Trying to take his third in this location seems interesting to me. He already knows that Incog's been pushing this location. Oh, that tank going down immediately. That is crucial. Losing that tank hurts so badly. And GG's out. Incog takes the game. The Spartan was not prepared to pull his 300S pushback. He didn't have enough tanks. He didn't have enough upgrades. There was nothing doing there. Incog. Goblin. What do you think, Spartan? Not Spartan. Not Spartan. It, only in the sense of the word minimal. Yes. Yes. He. I, do you think he took too complex of a troop loadout for that fight? No. I, I think that actually, uh, I think that his composition was pretty good. He had Marines, Marauders, Tanks, which is Bio Plus Tank, mm -hmm. which is very good against what was mostly a Marine tank build for my part. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the Marauders are going to struggle against my Marines, yep. so that's a little bit of a thing to consider. Mm -hmm. But his Marauders can do really well against my tanks. So yep. if he controls to that advantage, if he exploits yes. that, then things can happen. But sure. that didn't happen. Um, nope. So. Nope. Um, do you think he was prepared for the strategy you threw at him? No. You don't think he knew what was coming? Well, I mean... It would seem to me that the turret was not being built mm -hmm. until I revealed Cloak with my actual Banshee. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Um, when the Banshee showed up, there was already an engineering base, so it wasn't a tech problem getting yep. to the turret. Uh, but, you know, it was under construction after I had already flown away to be done. Yes, so he had seen your Banshee, and then right. was like, oh, I should probably get a turret. So so the scout didn't really scout, is what I'm trying to say. So he scouted, but didn't pay attention, you think. So he wasn't really prepared. Yes. Um, do you think that he was prepared for you to immediately switch out a Banshee? You know, I, do, I, I can't, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I don't know how to answer that. Do you think he expected to see two or three more Banshees? Or do you think he expected only one? It depends on what he watches. If okay. he watches. Because uh, okay. I don't want to speak for my opponent. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Uh, they didn't go ham on the turrets. It's true. He only built two. Right. So... Maybe you know, he was ready for it. Normally one to three Banshees is sort of the, the range. Yeah. Uh, right? yeah. And three is a bit much. Um, yeah. Okay. Beautiful play there. I um, I feel like you really brought it together on that one. I thought your play was much more constructed, more put together. It felt more like you had a game plan that you executed on. I was a little worried for you there, but then he never attacked you. And then I felt better. Uh, so remember, if you were a Spartan, you have to attack at some point. And if you don't attack, because... Um, in StarCraft, to win the game, you have to damage your opponent. And if you don't damage your opponent, you can't win. So I'd encourage you to think about that as you're playing StarCraft, that you must not just spend money, not just collect money, but then use the things you build to do damage. Okay? It's like in an MMO, mm -hmm. when you're fighting the raid boss, yeah. And you just sit there and everybody's healing. Right? That doesn't kill And then the, the rage thing. and then the, the enrage timer goes off and it's yeah. the wipe. Yeah. Yeah. That's um you know, I felt like that was a little like what happened in this game. It's it, there's yes. And and, and yeah, I mean there's so much truth to what the goblin speaks right now. So much truth. Often. C collect the resources and employ the resources. So but employing isn't just building. It's not just building. That's right. 
That's right. And that's the thing. We always want to be getting out there. And I understand how it feels. I understand how it feels when you've been hit with something you weren't expecting. Even mm -hmm. if it didn't do much damage, you were like, oh, caught off guard. You know, sometimes yeah. it can be hard to keep the composure and be like, sure. wait a minute. I just saw four Hellions and, like, four Marines and a Banshee. I could probably go kill all of that. Yeah. 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 But instead, they were contained. Yes. Yes. Which was probably a mistake, because I feel like if he had attacked you right there, yes. he would have just won the game. Yep. Like, oh, uh, he could have just walked up the map and basically won with you. Yeah. And, like, you would have been sitting there like, well, my Marines are going to be done in a second. Mm-hmm. I also have the suspicion that I was ahead in upgrades. I'm gonna let's that. let's take a quick look here. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Yep. You maintained the lead on upgrades for most of the game. There was one point where you went slightly behind, but that's essentially meaningless. <clears throat> um. Thank you for joining us today for Super Senior Gaming. I'm Goblin. This is Incognito. We will be back again in about a week's time to do another round of Super Senior Gaming, wherein one of us will play a game, and one of us will talk about it. Now, what game we will play, that's up in the air. It could be StarCraft. We like StarCraft. But there's other possibilities, too. It could be something neither of us has ever played before. It could be something one of us is good at and the other isn't. And who will be playing? The good player or the not good player? You never know. So I hope you will come back and join us. And also, we will be live in an hour and a half with Incog's normal show. He'll be doing the talking. I will just be playing and hanging out. I'll talk some too because... Because Goblin talks. And goblin talks. <laughs> um, so I hope you'll come join us here in an hour and a half at 8 o'clock to check out some Staircase Buddies. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Until later. Until later.